Hey there, Nick Genthakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over a couple of commands that you can run with Redis to measure various forms of latency. We're gonna start by going over how to determine the network latency between connecting from your client to the Redis server, and we'll go over what a client is in a second here. But secondly, we're also going to check the intrinsic latency of your Redis server. This is basically how willing or capable your Redis server is to receive CPU time from the server itself. And this will make more sense once we start running some commands and, and going over some details here. And uh, we're gonna be running all these commands, by the way, locally through Docker. So if you have Docker installed, feel free to follow along. If not, you can always just watch as well. And the reason why you might want to do any of this in the first place is, you know, let's say that you happen to have one server and you have a web application hosted there, as well as maybe having a database and you could be using Redis as well. And maybe all of that is hosted on one server. And now you're starting to scale out and you would like to move Redis off into a different server. And it would be really nice to be able to measure uh, the before and after of your Redis performance to see if there's any difference between between having it run locally on the same box as well as having it run separately. And then you connect to your separate Redis server over a local network. Of course, it's going to be quite a bit slower there because you have to uh, account for some network latency, but still, you know, it should be in the order of microseconds. But uh, yeah, depending on where you might have things hosted could be quite a bit longer. And in either case, it's really nice to be able to quantify exactly how much time it takes to do these things. So let's start by just having a Redis server run locally. And uh, we can do that with Docker very easily by running Docker container run, and then we'll pop in the IT flags for interactive mode. Uh, let's remove that con container when it stops. Let's name the container Redis, and then we'll use the Redis image, I think 7000 bullseye is the latest version, but we will see here. And I also just realized I should have been running tmux here, so I'm actually just going to uh, copy that command there. And then I can just run tmux here. And now we can split these windows here. And it's going to be a little bit easier to see what's going on. But uh, yeah, I am running this container now. We can see Redis is all running. And now we just need to start running uh, the commands that we want to start running. And then, uh, yeah, let's start with checking the network latency. And we can do that by doing uh, docker container exec. And then what do we want to do? Well, the name of the container is Redis here. And the command that we want to run uh, is Redis CLI. And it is the latency flag here. So again, like if you're not using Docker, you just be running Redis CLI here, you know, dash dash latency. You don't need uh, to prefix that with Docker stuff. But this is going to now connect to our Redis server here. And uh, just kidding. Uh, seems like I do need to actually put in the dash IT flags here as well. There we go because it is interactive mode here. And right now Redis is continuously running the ping command, which uh, I'll control C this and run this in a second here, but that ping, that ping command is uh, basically connecting to the Redis server and then getting a response back. And it's measuring how long it takes to get that response. And the numbers that we see here is measured in milliseconds. Now keep in mind, you know, I have OBS running, recording some videos, you know, I've got browser tabs open, et cetera, et cetera. And all this is happening uh, within Docker that's running inside of WSL2 uh, while I'm running Windows 10 Pro as a host here. But you can see here, it's going, you know, I, I can hit control C, you can hit control C whenever you want. You know, let's end it here. Let's see if I can stop it exactly on 4K and just see if I can do that. Ah. 4017. Sort of close, but not really. But we can see here that, uh, you know, it, it took 4,000 samples and on average, it took 200 microseconds or technically 210 microseconds because remember this is in milliseconds here. And the maximum here is about one millisecond. I don't know why the minimum shows zero there. Uh, I guess it's just, you know, some extremely low value. Perhaps it's maybe even uh, less than one microsecond and it just gets rounded up to zero here. But in any case, we can see, you know, 200 microseconds is how long it took to run the ping command. And, you know, you can just run the ping command like this and uh, yeah, we'll just get a response here from Pong, which is the Redis server here. It's a built-in command from Redis and latency just basically runs this command very, very fast. And yeah, just measures how long it takes there. So this is a command that you would typically run on your client. And in this case, you know, going back to that example before, you know, if you have a web application that needs to connect to Redis, you would want to run this Redis CLI command on the server that your web application is running on, not necessarily the Redis server if you happen to have Redis on a separate server, because you know we want to measure the network latency between the client and the server. Although theoretically, like, you know, as we see here, we can actually run this where the client and the server is on the same box. And you know, if this were just sitting on a DigitalOcean server and we just did the same things, like you know, possibly have everything communicated with Docker Compose, like it's the same deal as basically what we just saw here. So that is how you can measure the network latency. Of course, you know, depending on where you have all of this hosted, uh, these numbers could be substantially higher, could be maybe even a little bit lower if you have a better machine. But yeah, now let's talk a little bit about the intrinsic latency. Now this one is kind of interesting and 
This command, unlike the one that we just ran here, is not meant to be run on the client. This one, the intrinsic latency that we're gonna run, this is expected to be run directly on your Redis server because it's not even going to uh, make a connection to the Redis server. This intrinsic latency command that we're about to run, it's actually literally going to measure like the performance of your server itself, just to see how willing and capable it is to give uh, CPU time to Redis. And this command, instead of just running uh, intrinsic or instead of running latency, we need to run intrinsic latency. It's always a crazy one to spell. Like, oh, hold on, intrinsic latency. Yep, and then we need to say like, how long do we actually run and run this command for? And uh, let's go with 100 seconds here. So this is like number of seconds. This is actually what they suggest in their documentation. And yeah, let's let this one rip and see what happens. So basically, and keep in mind also, you know, these numbers are gonna be very spiky because I am recording a video, et cetera, et cetera. I'm also running this on an i5, uh, four core, 3.2 gigahertz, dev box that I put together like seven years ago. So your numbers may be uh, lower, we will see. But in any case, what's happening here is, yeah, Redis is just seeing like, am I getting CPU time? Am I getting CPU time? Like how long is it taking? How long is it taking? And the outputs that we see here is basically the longest possible time it's taken so far. So the idea here is you wanna run this command for a decently long time, you know, like a minute, two minutes, something like that, just to get a sample of like, you know, what is the system doing during that time and how long are things taking? And we can see, you know, here we're already up at, um, 3,600 microseconds, so that's what, three point, let's just call it 3.5 milliseconds. That's a big difference from 11 microseconds here. And eventually when this command finishes, it is going to give us a summary of like how many runs it did, like what was the average, what was the best, which one was the worst, and yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really keeping track of how long 100 seconds is, but let's continue rambling for as long as humanly possible. No, I'm just kidding. Like if it doesn't finish within like two seconds, I'm just gonna cut the video and I'll, I'll show it to you when it's done. And we're done. That was basically the longest 100 seconds ever. But we can see here that the average latency was 42 nanoseconds. So these two values are the same, just different uh, measurements here, right? This is 0 0.04 microseconds, 42 nanoseconds. And we can see that we did a lot of runs. Uh, I don't even know how many that is. I'm guessing somewhere in the billions, right? There's like three here. So that's 622,000, that is 350 million, so 2.3 billion runs. Uh, that was pretty fast in 100 seconds here. But keep in mind, this is not really measuring the performance of Redis, this is measuring the performance of your box. And my dev box here, yeah, it's like an i5 from like seven years ago with uh, 16 gigs of memory, has an SSD, well, this is running inside of Docker, et cetera. So I wouldn't be surprised if you ran this on your dev box and the numbers are a lot better. And, uh, you know, if you were on a really powerful server somewhere, like, you know, directly on bare metal with not using any virtualization, that should be very, very fast too. And, you know, ideally what's really important here is like the max latency, right? You don't want these numbers to be extremely different. Uh, we can see here too, like the average is 42 nanoseconds, but the max latency is 3.6 uh, milliseconds here. And, you know, if you had a very, very hard like latency requirement, you really couldn't depend on the server being any better than 3.6 milliseconds here because that's what we got here. And ideally, if you had a really important application, you'd be wanting to run this command potentially at different points in the day. Maybe you can just let it run for five minutes and maybe you run that like every hour or a couple hours and just get a random sampling to see what's gonna happen because uh, you're probably going to get very different results on various cloud providers, for example, on DigitalOcean or AWS or Azure or GCP or Linode or any other ones. You know, it's really dependent on where your server ends up being located relative to uh, your neighbors. Basically, the idea of having noisy neighbors, right? Uh, CPU time is going to be shared across all these different boxes. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be very different versus having like dedicated hardware somewhere. But in any case, yeah, this is two ways to measure various forms of latency with Redis. And that could be quite handy to do once in a while. Uh, on that note, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. If you have any questions about this, let me know. I'll do my best to answer all of those in the comments. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.